community itself. Uh, we just feel very fortunate to have the relationship that we, we do with Times of India and how it's growing. So, Satya, why are you coming up? I'm going to start uh, asking you questions. But uh, as we mentioned several times, we um, have uh, recently created a joint venture for GSV Labs and uh, Brand Capital, which is the investment arm of Times of India, um, with, a, with the center going in uh, Delhi and another one in Bangalore. Uh, we've got to think that's going to be huge for GSV Capital, just as, as the value in GSV Labs grows. But you look at Times Group, it's just, it's, uh, it's got so many different tentacles, and it's got so, so much uh, going on. I just, we thought it'd be a really fascinating conversation, both to get some perspective on internet, what's going on with uh, India, and to get an understand what's going on with one of the more interesting businesses that we're aware of. So Satyan, welcome. Thank you, thanks so much for having me, Mike. So first, talk a little bit more about what you're doing with Times Internet, sure. and sort of what the strategy is um, with that. Sure. So thanks everybody for having me. It's, it's wonderful to see such a great crowd out here. Um, just to give a, a very high level perspective, so the Times of India Group is this large 178 year old media company in India, which is ventured into pretty much every type of media, print, radio, television, internet, billboards, music, movies, etc. And unlike a lot of other media companies, what we've done is we've set up one separate company which operates, owns and operates our digital strategy. And so the digital strategy is comprised of two pieces. One is managing our traditional brands online. So we run timesofindia.com and economictimes.com and a few other of the traditional brands online. But the thing that makes us a bit different from most media companies is that we've actually built a bouquet of about 20 or 25 different digital businesses that give us a, a, a broader reach into the Indian consumer uh, well beyond our traditional platforms. So we run the largest music streaming service in India. We run the largest, so to give you the easiest examples, we run the Spotify of India, the Zillow of India, the Open Table of India, um, and about 10 or 15 other properties that operate in different categories. And so today, actually, in terms of our size, we're, we're different from most digital businesses. We have about 4,000 employees across these businesses. And from a reach perspective, we're unique because Across all of these, we reach on a monthly basis about 140 million users a month. And in India, besides Google and Facebook, there's no other company that has that level of scale today in India. And so, you know, we're, we're different than most media companies where we're really not trying to extend our offline brands online. We do that. But our goal and ambition is to build a world class product and technology business leveraging the backing of a very large media company. And you're also very, I mean, there's obviously brand capital, and, yep. and it was mentioned 600 investments, $2 billion <laughs> deployed. Um, but then there's also the stuff that you're doing strategically. So um, you know, you've made investments in Uber, you've made investments in Airbnb, you've made investment in Coursera, Rick Levin will be talking later. Yep. Uh, what, what is the thought with that strategy and how that's working? Yeah. So the, the simple answer is that we believe in having a lot of parallel tracks operating at once. And so we don't really have a, we have a lot of business units that are operating in parallel. And Brand Capital has been one of our great innovation centers over the last 10 years and continues to be. From our perspective, running the digital strategy, our view is pretty simple. Our, our mandate is to say whatever is relevant to the Indian consumer is relevant to us. Now, that is an incredibly wide and impossible mandate at the same time. And so our strategy has been, let's identify certain spaces where we think we can operate, we have something unique to bring, we have a capability to be a leader in whatever segment it is we're operating in, and let's build or acquire or invest into those businesses. But at the same time, we were also very clear that there's a number of great emerging companies coming out of the US and other countries around the world, um, which rather than trying to replicate or build something in India around, it might make more sense to partner with them and help them grow in India and figure out how to capture value in that equation. And so we said, we really like this idea, but we don't really know how to do it. And so we spent a lot of energy working on a model. And eventually, the first partner we ended up working with was Uber, which we announced about a year, year and a half ago, where we took a strategic stake in Uber. And we've sort of been a very key partner for them on the ground. We've now, we've kind of been conscious of saying we only want to do a few deals a year and really do them with a lot of sincerity and effort. And so we, we purposely restricted our flow a lot. And the, the, the last two deals we've announced are with Coursera and Airbnb. 
And it's, it's great for us and it's great for them because for us, we're partnering with literally the best companies in the world that are just innovating in ways that we can't imagine. And for them, having an understanding of a local market like India is increasingly critical. It's now the fastest growing digital market in the world. And they all know it's important. It's very easy to step up here and say, you know, India is an important market. But to actually understand the nuances on the ground, um, you know, suffice to say, at least, you know, our first partner, Uber, today, if you were to ask Travis or, or anybody on their team, they would speak really positively about what's happened in the last year and a half, at least partially because of the efforts we've put in. And so we really find this to be a great model because it's a win-win for us and our partners. So, and by the way, I have talked to people at Uber who do sing the praises. Emil <laughs> Michaels is a huge fan, so I just <laughs> talked to him recently. But um, talk about, it, it, what's really fascinating about Times of India, so first of all, Times of India is the largest English newspaper in the world. Uh, Economic Times is the second largest business newspaper in the world, but it's still, I mean, the paper business is thriving, which is like the only place I, I know that exists where paper, why, why is that work that way in India? It's, a, it's, a, it's the multi-billion dollar question you can say, but no, we're, we're very lucky because in India we continue to see growth in our print revenues and even in our print circulation today. Um, obviously, I think our digital business would be growing at a faster clip. But the size of our print business, you know, just to give you a sense, today print is a larger share of ad spends than any other media today in India, which means people spend more on ads and print than on television, than on digital, than on radio, and any other media. Um, you know, I think the, you know, we'd like to say at least we've played a large role in, in part of why that's happened. We, we, that's certainly the, the, the media where we're the strongest. Um, and, and I think the, the driving factor of it is that we've always treated print as a consumer product. And so one of the things we see is that when we see a lot of emerging media companies around the world and in the news space, they're always sort of grappling with to what extent are they here for their editorial ability to just share a view versus making sure that they're timely and relevant and connected with their consumers. And so, you know, for example, 20 years ago we did something very untraditional, which is that we added an entertainment supplement that comes in every newspaper, called Bombay Times and Delhi Times, and depending on the city. And we know today that that gets as much readership as the main paper. But it would be, and, and it's not like it's covering like the high arts and the fine arts of everything. It's covering the latest Bollywood releases and everything else. And so we, in our hearts, we believe that Times of India is a consumer product, and it will only continue to be a successful business if it remains relevant. And that means constantly evolving and changing its attitude, its perspectives, its emotion, and really trying to make sure it captures the pulse of its consumer, not necessarily the pulse of its editorial team. So there's going to be, it's projected there's going to be 700 million smartphones uh, in India by 2020. I think there's some, I guess Mary Meeker's report referenced the fact that internet users in India just surpassed the United States, so it's now the biggest, second biggest internet market. But talk about how the mobile strategy plays into the Times internet strategy. Yeah, you know, I think, one of the things we've seen is that there are, if a brand is strong on web, it'll have a natural transition into mobile. So I would say most of our properties today see 60 to 70, 60 to 80 percent of its traffic coming on mobile. So ones that are more casual in nature will see more mobile. Ones that are more, like our real estate portal will tend to be, still be a little bit more desktop because people don't casually search for houses. Um, but at the same time, the thing that I found very interesting is that we have two or three businesses that we've actually acquired because we haven't been able to necessarily build them, which are like 98% mobile. And today, those are actually the ones that are showing the fastest growth um, in, in our portfolio because they've really reconceptualized what they are purely for the mobile user. I mean, pretty much today, we have about 50 million connected users on desktops, and everything else is on mobile. And so we have anywhere between 150 and 200 million mobile users, which will triple in the next five years. And so, you know, for example, we, we bought this property called CrickBuzz, which is the largest, it's the ESPN.com for cricket. And cricket is the basketball plus football plus baseball of India. It's 75% it's of all sports consumption. And CrickBuzz now was number two in its position on desktop about a year and a half ago when we acquired it. And it was just this emerging thing on mobile. Today, it's mobile traffic when there's a prominent cricket tournament happening is 98% of its consumption and it's 10x the size of its nearest competitor on mobile. Just last month, or just the last 45 days, there was a large tournament in India called the IPL, and it had one and a half billion visits, of which 1.45 billion visits were on mobile. 
um, which is, it's, it's a little bit daunting because we've never seen that kind of scale in a lot of our businesses before. But I, I think the, the lesson that we've learned is when you strike it right on mobile, it's a very different consumption pattern than desktop. And when you've got it pretty right, it's similar to desktop. So Prime Minister Modi was out here recently. He was treated like kind of a rock star. I mean, it was uh, <laughs> phenomenal just to see the level of excitement and buzz that he generated in Silicon Valley. Um, obviously, a big part of his platform is around entrepreneurship and innovation. Absolutely. Talk more about Startup India and talk about what's really going on there as it relates to the innovation economy. You know, it's pretty amazing. I've at least never seen a government set an initiative to say we want to see a certain amount of startups and startup enabling institutions like accelerators and, um, and in, in, in incubation and incubators um, as a target for a government. But that's actually what our prime minister announced about three to six months ago at a major event that they called Startup India. And I think the, the large premise, if you ask me, is that um, most developing markets have a large instilled old business sort of setup that has a lot of power and, and wealth and generally controls a lot of countries. Like in Russia, you would see it in China, to some extent Brazil and India. And that's starting to really change in India in a major way, where you see new entrepreneurs innovating and creating wealth in a very new way. It's not based on like having a relationship with some minister. It's really based on innovation. And I think our, our prime minister saw that and has said that if we can make that, you know, for, for India, the last 20 years, the innovation has been in IT, which is that we were providing bodies that could do technical work for the rest of the world. His vision for the next 10 or 20 years is that we can actually be a builder of real products, consumer and enterprise, that can shape not only India and solve a lot of India's problems of its own, but also have an influence worldwide. So when you joined Times of Inter Internet, you laid out three core goals. <laughs> One convert the Times Internet into a collective of startups rather than one large company. Two, operate companies like they're entrepreneurs more than professionals. And three, adopt a model that didn't depend on building everything in-house. How, uh, one, how are you progressing towards those goals and have the goals changed? Sure. So it's been four years now, and, and I'm amazed to say that's the only thing that's been consistent in the last four years is that those three things for me, and I don't know where they came from. But, you know, when I, when I came in, um, Times Internet is, you, you know, my view is that big companies tend to be less effective on the Internet because they're not as fast. Media companies often tend to not be very effective on the Internet because they don't really understand technology. And we were a big media company, or we were certainly part of a big media company. And so one of my large drives was to really change that from the culture and from the ground up of the company. And so we really moved into a new office, which had a very different feel. We have effectively no management overlap with the rest of the group. Um, and we really try to maintain that. And, and our premise has been that small companies are more efficient in operating. And so instead of being one company, like, I, like I'm the CEO of this large business, but I don't really do anything. I come and speak at conferences like this. <laughs> because each of those businesses has their own CEO that's running their business with a lot of autonomy. The second thing was that each of these businesses need to really be run by entrepreneurs, not professionals. And what, what we see is that the motivation of an entrepreneur frankly, is to make something really big and make a lot of money on the back of it. Whereas the motivation of a professional is often to see a larger title or a larger scope of authority, and those motivation structures don't align with what we need for the company to be successful. And then the third thing is that, you know, the truth is in our, our television business has 10 competitors. Our print business has five competitors. We have 10,000 competitors. And so the challenge for us is how do you actually continue to innovate and remain competitive in such an intense environment? And so we took a very strong view that M&A would be a core part of our strategy. And so we've invested in, I mean, small investments in about 40 companies, meaningful investments in about five or 10, and about 12 acquisitions in the last four years, all of which, which have helped us build new business lines and really operate fairly independently. And the amazing thing, and the last thing I'll just say, is of those 12 acquisitions, 11 of those founders are still operating their businesses, still hold equity in their businesses overall, because our term sheets actually say that when we acquire your business, you're not allowed to move into our office because we really want them to remain independent and strong startups, just leverage the resources that we can bring from time to time. So Times of India, obviously based in India. Times Internet, obviously based in, sorry, I guess based in India. <laughs> but you're based here. <laughs> so besides the fact that you and your wife went to Stanford, 
Uh, why are you here in Silicon Valley as opposed to, to there? Um, there's a few different reasons. Um, one of them is that in the last year, year and a half, we've really seen this local partners model for India take off, and it was something I wanted to invest a bit more personal energy into. And so, you know, Rick and I have worked closely together, Uber and Airbnb, we've worked closely together, and there'll be a couple others hopefully that will we'll develop. And so, it's been a great opportunity for me to be here. Second is that, you know, on the ground in India, we have a really good pulse for what's happening there. And if I hadn't spent the last eight years on the ground, I wouldn't really have that connection with the country there as much as I do. At the same time, we know that a lot of the heart of global innovation and technology is still out here. And so I've actually found it very effective over the last few months to be a bridge of sharing ideas and talent and capabilities back and forth between here and, the US, uh, between here and India. Uh, and so it, it sort of served multiple roles. I still am in India 30, 40% of the time, and I travel more than I'd like to. But um, in a weird way, it helps us get a lot more of a global perspective to what we're doing for me to not necessarily be on the ground in India today. So you talk about that bridge more specifically. What kind of, what, what, what needs to happen to really make that bridge um, effective? And what, what have you seen in terms of success that gives you uh, confidence that that's something that's going to really bear the investment that you're making? So there, there's a few places. So one is that we have, we actually just announced, it, or a few months ago, announced an acquisition in the US, which is a cricket business in the US. And so that's a, a bridge going this way, so to speak. Um, you know, very hard technology problems. So one of, one of our core strategies that you'll see from us in the next year going forward is that as all of our users move to mobile, the amount of real estate you have to talk to the customer is just so much less. And so you have to be a lot smarter about figuring out what to serve him. So we produce 1,000 articles a day on Times of India. The average user reads 5 to 10. How do we make sure that the right 5 to 10 are in front of him? So one of the places we're putting a lot of energy and effort is on personalization and figuring out how to leverage all the data that we have across our entire group to make the best recommendations for our consumers and for our advertisers and so forth. Now, we have a lot of great talent working on those problems in India, but the people that are writing research papers and actually innovating on you know, these sort of deep learning, machine learning um, algorithms are based out here. And so we're actually now setting up a little bit of a consultancy arrangement with a few companies out here that are helping us and bringing some of those best-in-class talent capabilities to India. So we got one for you too. Silicon Valley Data Science is a portfolio company. You need to talk to them. <laughs> so talk Done. just just last question. Yeah. So talk about you. You know, you got so many interesting things going on. You're seeing so many interest. You know, so many compelling ideas. You love all your children. You're 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 busy a lot. But what what are you most excited about that you're seeing? I mean, India is like the wild, wild west right now. Um, there are so many uncertain, unpredictable things today. Um, the only thing that's known is that this market, in in the market in India will be 3x its size in the next five to 10 years. Now, whether it's four years, five years, six years, seven years, nobody can really predict. Um, but we will add an America and a half of new users in the next five to 10 years. And there's nowhere else in the world that can say that. We also have the fastest growing GDP per capita on a consumer basis. And so you've got this trend of increasing connectivity and increasing wealth. And I'm really lucky because we're in a position where we reach more users than most people in India. And so you know, the way we look at our company is that we're just this giant call option, which is that if we're able to properly take advantage of our scale and our reach and our engagement, to build meaningful services that add value to consumers and, and hopefully create value, we're in a great place. Um, but that story is still very uncertain because we're all betting on what India will become in the next five, 10 years more than where it is today. Thank you very much. Please Thank give Sachin a hand.